in the business and education world for the longest time we were a Microsoft world uh, and now we have G Suite, uh, Google Docs, Google Forms, things like that, which is really taking over and revolutionizing education. Having said that, a lot of our stuff is still in a Microsoft format, and even some programs we use, state programs, uh, school level programs, still live in that Microsoft world where all you have available is to download a PDF or download a Word document, and that really doesn't help us transition smoothly to G Suite, Google Docs, Google Forms, and that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to show you today is how to use an add-on called Doc to Forms, and we will take those Word documents, convert them into Google Drive, Google Docs, and then we will take those Google Docs and simply and easily make a Google Form. So you can take your Microsoft Word test or quiz and turn it into a Google Form in just a few simple clicks. So, we have our Google Drive pulled up here, and we need to change one setting, and then anything we upload will automatically turn into a Google document, or a Google spreadsheet, or a Google you know, power, uh, slides from PowerPoint. So we're going to come over here to our gear, and we're going to click on settings, and then the second option, convert uploads, we're going to check that box. And what that says is that if we upload a Word document, it's going to automatically convert that into a Google Doc. If we upload a Excel spreadsheet, it will automatically convert that into a Google Sheets. If we upload a PowerPoint, it will automatically convert that into a Google Slides. Uh, so that just takes that conversion factor uh, off our plate. So we'll click Done, and then all you have to do is either click New, File Upload, and you can upload your Word document that used to be a quiz or a test, and it will go into whatever folder you're in. So right now I'm just in my drive, um, my drive, and so it'll just put it in the root of my drive, which is really not where you want to put stuff. So I would go into um, some sort of folder, and then once I'm in that folder, click new, file upload. Now it's going to upload it in that folder. So you can continue to organize your things uh, in a folder structure just like you would on your hard drive and, and keep things organized by unit or by class or however your organizational system works. So once we've uploaded the document it will automatically convert it into a Google Doc which I've already done and so you can see it keeps the .doc or .docx uh, extension to let you know that this is what I converted this is the original name and I have converted it. So this is, my, this is an old quiz of mine when I used to teach physical science and so I want to turn this into a Google Form so that I can share that through Google Classroom with my students and still use the same quiz that I put time into figuring out the questions and the answers and all that kind of stuff but I want to make it easy now so that we can use uh, Google Forms to do that. So I'm going to go to Add-ons. So in Docs I'm going to go to Add-ons and I need to get an add-on. Now if you've already got this add-on you don't have to get it but we're going to assume that you don't have it. So it'll take a second to load and then what we're going to do, we're just going to search for it. We're going to do doc to forms and hit enter. And this is it, doc to form. And if you see the blue free button, you know you don't have it installed yet. If you see a manage, a green manage button, that means it's already installed. You can skip this step. So I'm going to add it. It's going to take me through some permissions. I'm going to put it on my account. And I'm going to tell it to allow those permissions. So now that we have the add-on, we're going to go over here to add-ons, doc to form, and create a form. And we can collect our username by checking that, and that means they have to be logged in in order to take the, qu the exam, the quiz, the test, whatever it is. Uh, if they're not logged in, they can't collect the, uh, the form can't collect their username, and uh, so they're, they, they're blocked out. So this is always a good thing to, to do for, for classes, uh, is to collect the username. Uh, you can ask for their name, and that would just make a question that says, what is your name? Uh, you can ask for the teacher name, and that would make a question, what is your teacher's name? Uh, in case you have multiple teachers or something like that. Now, I collect usernames. That's their email address in my district. Their email address is their first and last name, so I don't worry about asking for names. Um, I'm ready to make the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I am going to highlight the question and then use selected text and that brings that question straight over here now 
I get multiple choices of what kind of questions to ask. I can ask a text, quest, text question, which means they have to type in the answer. I can ask a paragraph question, which means they type in more than just a few words. They type in a paragraph. Um, multiple choice, I can do that. If I wanted to handwrite, I can go anion and cation and closer to. And all I got to do is put semicolons in between each option, uh, semicolons, not commas, and it will create multiple choice answers for them to choose. So anion would be A, cation would be B, closer to would be C. Uh, so I don't have to put the letters in there, I can just put the words with the semicolon between them. Now if I wanted to have them choose from a list, which in this case is, is what I kind of want to do, I would have to come in here and it would take a second so I'll, I'll copy this one and I'm just going to control V uh, control, C, or control C for copy, control V for paste semicolon uh, further away control copy control paste now we're going to copy this entire list so we don't have to retype this every time so control C control V semicolon and Control C, Control V, semicolon, and Control C, Control V. Now I'm going to copy this entire list of questions that I just did. So I'm going to Control C this. So copied that. Now I'm going to add a question. All I have to do is highlight the question. I don't have to copy it. Remember, because I've copied this list, and that's what's on my clipboard. So I'm going to use selected text. It pulls it over. I'm going to come over here and choose from a list, and I'm going to put my cursor in there and control V, paste, and there's my entire list already formatted. So once I got through the first question, the rest of these are going to go pretty quickly. I'll add another question, and I'm going to highlight number three, and then I'm going to use selected text. And just to make, change things up, let's do multiple choice. Uh, so we'll do multiple choice, control V. It's going to work exactly the same. Let's try another kind of question. Let's add number four and use selected text. And let's do checkboxes this time just to mix things up. So you get the idea. I go through, I add all my questions, I make sure my answer is the way I want them, and then I create the form. It takes a second to create it. Now it's created. So I'm going to view the form. And so I see my first question, I have all of my answers there. My second question, all my answers. Third question we said was multiple choice. Now we have multiple choice. Fourth question was check boxes. And here's all my answers in checkbox form. And if you hit the little preview button, the eyeball on a form, you can see it as if the students were taking it. You can actually take the, the quiz or the test or the form at this point. So for the nucleus is found in the center of the, we'll do the drop down and we will select. electron cloud. Uh, positive ion is called a cation. The more energy an electron has, the blank the nucleus moves. Well, you get the point. I don't need to take this for you. Uh, so that's how we make our quizzes. Now remember when we said we needed to put our, I just closed it, original Word document, our quiz, in a folder so we can keep things organized well that serves two purposes one it keeps our folder our, our original documents organized but then anything we create will go into that folder as well so this form is going to be in the same folder as our converted document so all of that will be there together uh, to keep things organized and simple for you now in the forms if you go to responses, you can see the responses, but then if you create a spreadsheet to look at those responses, then that will be in the same folder as well. So I will link in the description below how to use Google Forms uh, effectively to create quizzes, uh, how to self-grade, um, that kind of thing uh, with Google Forms without having to use add-ons uh, for the grading. We used to have to use Fluberoo, now we can just do it straight through the form. Uh, that link will be in the description below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.